Hey everybody and welcome back to Nightbringers Watch. I am your host Falk and tonight we are continuing our way here through Vampire in the dark city of London. It's raining and last time we left off in Whitechapel where we've been um, witness to a secret of a certain nurse. And now we are off to find some um, inhabitants of Whitechapel district uh, to which we have to talk to uh, last time I think we talked to those two um, those former friends and now we have to talk to other citizens and here we should find Clayton in the area could you be Clayton Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me, since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Okay, um... Let's first ask about your investigation in London. Um... No newspapers speak about the epidemic. Right, uh, the whole uh, people that we spoke about uh, said that in the newspaper only about the war is written and nothing about the plague. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. Hmm. I would say it's criminal to hide such an information from citizens. If no one stops it, this epidemic could turn into a scourge. It may kill more people than the war itself. Yes, this is another kind of war, but just as deadly. History will judge us all for what we did and what we did not. Okay, hey, not afraid of getting out at night. Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? Hmm. So, is this the vampirism that they are talking about now? I think so. But should we go for a rational explanation? Let's say it's not a simple epidemic. I'm convinced there is more at work here than a simple epidemic. Really? <sighs> to be honest, I could say the same. Some of the sick I saw or heard of. My god, what happened to them? Okay. So what are you doing here after sunset? What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. Ah, okay. Uh, you risk your life to reveal the truth? So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. Hmm, okay. So we got a new hint about, um, Lickendari. That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. Hmm, okay. Okay, let's get back. We still have to, um, personal questions. Ah, okay. We need more hints. Damn the story thing about an underground medical dispensary. I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? Uh, I care about public health. I'm, I'm a surgeon, you know. I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything in 
involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. <laughs> what do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. So he never goes out? He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. Oh, okay. And he has no relatives? He has no relatives at all? No. Except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel, talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. Okay. I thought that the nurse Crane, because she has also another name, is also a relative of this Darius. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Okay. Find the mailbox letter so we have an update. And here's a frantic praying churchman, it seems to be. Let's talk to them. Forgive my interruption. Do not apologize, my son. Father Tobias Whitaker is always happy to teach mortals about the incoming Armageddon. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, and I just have a few questions. A scientist? You are much more lost than I thought, my son. Oh boy. Um, I don't want to get interfered with Tobias Whitaker. Let's just go for I'm looking for Nurse Dorothy Crane. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses, but I especially abhor that Nurse Crane you mentioned. Okay. Why well, hate Nurse Crane? Why do you hate Nurse Crane more than other nurses? Before coming to London, she was a member of the communist resistance in her country. That's what happens when you let a woman get involved in politics. Oh, God. Uh, and why don't you like nurses? So you're not exactly a fan of Florence Nightingale's work. But nurses are essential for modern healthcare. Nuns should be the only women allowed to take care of male patients. It's obvious only they have the necessary moral fiber. I have heard enough for tonight. Goodbye. Oh boy. Yeah, okay. The game is set in, I don't know, the early 20th century, I, I think. So, um... Yeah, it, it's, uh, there are, there should be lots of those people. Okay, this is the, is the letterbox, I think, this is the letterbox and behind the uh, church should be Richard Nithercott. Okay, so let's see, I don't think that we can enter many... It's I'll locked, all right. Here. Okay. Where is the mailbox? Oh, where's this? Flower bouquet. A small flower bouquet with a, a voucher for free medical checkup hidden between the flowers. Oh, okay. Uh, we had that. I just can't get which language that is. I don't think it's Polish. Oh, hey. Who are you? Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I know what you're thinking. A tall stranger who meets a girl in the street at night. It reeks of the penny dreadfuls. But I mean you no harm, truly. Uh, 
Ah. <laughs> Let's use this. Camellia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Hmm. A stubborn and mute comrade. Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have been clever. So she is mute? I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute. Okay, let's say goodbye for now. Very well. Goodbye then. We have to find the Mabel's letter. So it might be here. Okay. There is Petrescu's letter. My dearest, most beloved children, I am so sorry you have not heard from me for a few months. The situation in London has been difficult. I know it may sound selfish and silly when you, my children, are still living uh, in a country consumed by war. But there's also a war going on here in England. A war against poverty and against injustice. This is a war I intend to fight despite my advanced years. This is why I am writing to you today. I won't be coming back to Romania. Ah. That probably means I won't see you again before I die. Don't be sad, my darlings. You are grown up now, and you have children of your own. You know the sacrifice we sometimes must accept to make the world a better place. This is one I must make now, to feel useful one more time. I wish you a long and happy life. Kiss my uh, grandchildren for me. And remember that your father loves you all the way from this cold, damp country. I am as ever your loving father, Darius Petrescu. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Okay. What is this? There's a sign. Ah, okay. It's all over the place. And we can't enter the church. Can we enter these houses? I don't think so, so... Let's ignore them. I cannot enter. Who's there in the background? It's Camellia, and there are more flower bouquets. With those hidden notes. Okay, so this is... Oh no, this is into another district. So we have... Ah, okay. We have to go from the front to the left side, I think. From there, behind the church. Of course, there hasn't been an entrance. We could go in here, but I think that's only a path to the front. Oh, no, it's a dead end. Okay. Then let's turn around. And do some dashing to the center. Can we go into the church? Oh, okay. We also might go a place if, if we enter because we are a vampire. Good evening, Doctor. Can I help you? Do you have anything new? No, I don't Goodbye, think. Mr. Darby. Farewell. Oh, we could have checked uh, the. Mesmerized stages and uh, the health. Okay. We are now in skull territory. Thought of some, something like that. There's a uh, corpse lying around. Desolate Sky, okay. Can we sneak up? We can. Then let's drink a bit. Oh, there's... Ah. Oh god, I used the wrong button. No, I used the right button. Okay. 
Get in. Pick right. Okay, this one's down, and there goes the third. Okay. So what's with the corpse? Ah, oh, we could only loot it. There's no way to this place. Can't go in here. Church is still not. Ah, it's the fire. Okay, I follow her steps. Find Richard in the area. Here's a cross. And that has to be Richard. But first let's check behind in this corner. Okay, we can't go in there. And here are just some more ingredients. Okay. Hello. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please be my guest. Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Richard Nithercott, at your service. Okay, this is a you rather... Need medical attention, sir. It may be wise to let you prescribe me something. I don't feel like I should. Cold. Treatment for cold. We have something, so let's I give the medicine. I understand your appetite for words and macabre beauty, sir. But you should be more careful. The nutrition of my mind is more important than my physical health. But I appreciate your concern, sir. Okay. So, because this is a more interesting character than the uh, churchman, let's ask some personal questions. Why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? Tell me, Mr. Nethercott. Why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but uh, how to explain it? Stirring and challenging. Do you have any examples? In what way, exactly? The struggle by gaslight, the barren smiles and the added hunger under the rain. If you say so. Such vibrant antagonism and vivid paradox, the stripped humanity raged across each street. Vivid, of course, yes. And what about the poignant distress? Oh yes, the poignant distress. You see what I mean, don't you? That's what I want to write about, and that's what Whitechapel is made of. Hmm. Do you th not think it a little morbid? Do you not think it a little morbid? On the contrary, oh. sir. Whitechapel is full of life, full of beauty. Just like my dear muse, the wonderful Camellia. What can you tell me about Camellia? Not much. And that's the beauty of it. She can't speak, you know. She's a locked mystery who exhales kindness and sweetness. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm. Afraid to find the truth about her? Perhaps you're just afraid to find out the truth about your muse. One day, perhaps, I'll ask her to come with me. But, ah. Uh, Will she still be my wild flower of Whitechapel if she moves uptown? You don't know her? And have you ever tried to learn more about her? Where she lives? How she survives? Whom she may know? Maybe I prefer she remains an enigma. Reality can be so dull, don't you think? Yeah, that is the truth. Okay, where is... Ah! The Mute Florist is part of a plot. Did you know the Mute Florist is a member of a secret society? No, I didn't. But I thank you for this information, sir. For it only enriches the mystery surrounding the precious Camellia. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, let's be friendly and ask if he's not curious. Are you not curious? 
Is there not more you wish to know? That girl has not an ounce of malice in her. Whatever she may be hiding, it's certain to be for the benefit of most, if not all. Okay. Um, let him be a helpless romantic. Uh, your life in London. What are you doing here at night? May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. Hmm, okay. Not afraid of the pandemic? But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, save the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor, all are equal in the eyes of the flu. Okay. You should avoid exposure. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both know the seeker of truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. Uh, thoughts on the situation in London? What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy. But the scourge has not been all bad for the city. Oh, no, sir. What are you talking about? Do you remember London before the flu? Noisy, cacophonic, quiet, nowhere to be found. And now, listen to this oddly peaceful silence. Okay. Yeah, that's quite a unique point of view. Yes. The enjoyable silence of the grave. You have a unique perspective on the situation, I must admit. Most people fail to understand my perspective. I don't blame them. But how could I call myself a poet if I veiled my feelings? Hmm. Your life could be in danger here. Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. Okay. Who will help you if you're in danger? If some misfortune came upon you. Who would be here to help you? Well, you, for a start, my dear doctor. Huh, okay. It is somewhat risky around here. I understand your need for solitude, but it's not safe around here. I don't care. I don't have many friends, doctor, and my family despises me. Huh, okay. Okay, then let's head for the... Uh, story quest. I am looking for Nurse Dorothy Crane. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. Hmm. About Dorothy Crane? I'm looking for Dorothy Crane, a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But, sorry, no, never heard of her. Then what about Darius Petrescu? What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. Okay. So we learn something new about Darius. Okay, I'll let's say goodbye. Alone, Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. Mm okay. Anything we can plunder back here? Doesn't look like... Hey, Camellia. We are coming for you. Or not, I don't care. Oh, there's a person close by, so I can't use my, my vampiric skills. Is it that? Hmm. Okay. Good, then let's head back to Darius. Okay, now I have to run. I can't just use my my talents. 
Oh, who are you? Don't be shy, handsome. What can Christina do for you? I'm not looking for what you're selling. But I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. I'm a doctor. Dr. Reed. All right, then. But be quick. Though I usually get paid when I open my mouth. <laughs> okay. Christina Papa. Um... Let's ask about the life in London. About your health. About Clayton Darby's investigation. Hmm, okay. Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time. Until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Hmm, okay. Why this skepticism? Why this skepticism? How can you speak about starvation if you've never been hungry? Or about poverty? Or anything else you have never suffered from? Hmm, okay. Are you talking from experience? Are you talking from experience? I've seen your type come here to get a good fuck in a cheap room or a dark alley before going back to their fancy houses in the West End. Uh, let's do a medical check check up here. Oh, fatigue. I don't have a treatment for that. About your health. Christina, have you been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London. And you could be exposed. Or expose others. I don't like doctors or hospitals. But I don't like you asking questions. Oh, okay. What about your client's health? You can put your own life in danger, that's your decision. But what about your clients? If you're contaminated, you will put them in danger too. And you think that would worry me? If you knew the men I deal with, their health would not be what you'd worry about. Okay. Your line of work has many health risks. Considering your line of work, I assure you it is only a matter of time before you have health issues if it is going to happen it will happen right now i need money that's what's important okay so let's go for wait personal questions tell me about yourself, me about yourself. are you joking with me people don't usually come to see me for conversation i have no interest in your work i am however curious as to what led you into this career <laughs> Short story. The war, exile, and England. This country is not especially welcoming. I've been refused many jobs because of where I am from. I had few oh. options left. I don't judge you. I always you. thought I was the master of my own fate. But now I know we don't always have control over. I don't judge you. You know, this money is not only for me. I have good reasons to need this money quickly. But it is not your concern, Doctor. Okay. Then let's ask about Nurse Crane. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? Anything you can tell me about her would be helpful. I don't know her. But I know her name is Dorothea Krasionescu. She came from Romania, like me and many others. You seem to respect her. Dorothea helps the sick people of Whitechapel. Everyone should respect that. Yeah, okay. Then goodbye, let's say goodbye. Miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. Okay, can we now make our way to... Um, Darius? Okay, we have... Then not to this place I think but I don't want to go there now let's uh, run straight to the house of Darius that should be here on the corner somewhere ah here okay hello hello Mr. Petrescu just one minute please you again go away could uh, use mesmerize if we had love to let's have a man to mentor sir wait stop this nonsense i know nurse crane is here shall we speak man to man you and i 
<laughs> All right. Speak up. Don't you see we're on the same side? We fight to help the poor, sick, and abandoned. I'm nothing like you, Mr. Doctor. Yes, you are. You too believe in providing medical care without charge. You know what we have to sacrifice to make the world a better place. I have to admit your words have conviction. All right, I'll let you see, Dorothea. Don't make me regret this, though. Okay. Easy. Um, can we talk to him again and see what his health status is? Oh, we have a new collectible. It's locked, locked. alright. It's locked, alright. There's another safe. Uh. Hmm. Stealing from the poor old man. Okay. If you want to talk to Dorothea, you must go across the courtyard and take the stairs. We've not been formally introduced. May I ask your name and occupation, sir? I am Darius Petrescu. I'm here to keep snitches and spies away from Dorothea. And I also run this little print shop. A print shop? Ah, yeah, okay, um... The power tool is about that. Let's ask some personal question. Or ah, yeah, we had that. Hmm. Do you have any family left? Do you have any family left, Mr. Petrescu? Children or grandchildren? Who knows? I have abandoned my people for so long; they might as well be dead. As dead as I am for them, I suppose. Hmm. Don't be embarrassed, sir. If you must know, my own father disappeared many years ago, and I forgave him. It's quite awkward to talk about our families like this, but... Thank you, Dr. Reed. I appreciate your trust. I don't want to ask the other question. Let's ask about the political past. I know you fought for your country when it was occupied, Darius. Tell me more about it. I know my days are numbered, and I know I won't see my homeland again. But I fought for Romania all my life, and I will until my last breath. But Romania escaped the grasp of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It's a free country again. But it's not the country I fought for. My homeland is not appeased, Doctor, and I still see a dark future ahead for my people. How did you meet Nurse Crane? How did you meet Nurse Crane, Darius? Why does she trust you? I'm her oldest friend in England. Dorothea and I share many ideas about this country and about the country we left. You mean occupied Romania, don't you? Even if not directly, I fought against your enemies. Really? Then perhaps you have more in common with Dorothea than meets the eye, Dr. Reed. Hmm. Okay. Your life in London. Tell me more about Camellia. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor, but I'm almost convinced Camellia is an angel. She volunteered to give out our medical leaflets. Who is she really? Who is she, really? Do you know where she's from? She's not from around here, that's all we know. Camellia is not even her name. It's her favorite flower. You say she has no close family. Well, there's that awful poet who constantly follows her around like a lost puppy. <laughs> a good man, for sure, but a very poor writer. Ah, okay. There are some opposite... Uh, um, meanings about good and bad writing going on there. Are you not worried? For her safety. Are you not worried for her safety? She is as brave as she is tough. And clever, too. 
If only I had met her when I was younger. Are you in love with Camellia, Mr. Petrescu? Don't be stupid. If I had met her when I was younger, we could have won our revolution. Oh, okay. About uh, Nurse Crane's real name. So Dorothy's real name is not Crane. Like myself and many people in this area, Dorothea is from occupied Romania. That's all you need to know. She seems important to the community. More than you can imagine. The West End does not want to hear of Whitechapel's misery. Dorothea is one of the few doing something about it. Mm -hmm. Did we have that? Yeah, we have that. We had this too, right? Yeah, okay. Goodbye, then Mr. let's say goodbye. Okay, there's so much going on here in Whitechapel, and I think uh, before I face off Nurse Crane, I will uh, roll the end card here and say thank you for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Whitechapel is an interesting district with lots of shady people. Revealing the truth and delivering them from evil will be of utmost priority. Your utmost priority should be to support your favorite fog in viewing another video. Thank you all for watching, liking, sharing and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!